Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Dwyer Boxing News on Roku. Made a video earlier today on Hay versus uh, Tyson Fury, where we talked about fight styles, and that video has gotten a lot of comments, right? A lot of provocative comments, right? Many people have their own views on fight styles. Let me just share mine. Keep in mind, we're all peers here. We're just discussing boxing, right? First, let me say this. I believe the difference between the 70s and now, and I understand the 70s were a great era for boxing, right? You know, you could turn on network TV and actually see people like George Foreman, Ken Norton, Ali, Fraser, um, Leon Spinks, Jimmy Young, one of my personal favorites, right? And I'll agree in the 70s, Fighters had to be prepared to go 15 rounds. Also, the referees were much more lenient. So you have some big fights in the 70s. Foreman versus Ken Norton, for example. Foreman versus Joe Fraser, where guys are getting knocked down multiple times. And if you're able to beat the count, the fight continued. Right These days... Referees care much more about fighter safety, or at least stop fights much earlier than they did in those days. But let me just say, look at people's feet. Right, What you'll see is, in the 70s, some fighters were up on their toes. Muhammad Ali, right, up on his toes. We had a phrase back then, I lived through the 70s, where you talked about fighters dancing. That's what they called it right? Guys were up on their toes. Guys were dancing. Today, what's interesting is that even a mobile guy like David Hay, when he's doling out punishment, he's flat-footed. In other words, today, you have guys who can move, but they're flat-footed. Look at the weights, too. Look at George Foreman in the 1970s. Look at what he weighed. By the way, the weights for fights in the 1970s, the weights of the participants in key fights going back even generations earlier than that, can be found on BoxRec.com, B-O-X-R-E-C.com, right? You can register on that site. I don't own the site. I have no ownership interest. I don't represent the site operators. You can register on that site for free. It's educational. In the 70s, you had big lumbering guys like George Foreman. But if you look at Foreman's weight in the 1970s, and if you compare and contrast it with the weight of some of the fighters today, the point is today, guys who weigh what Foreman weighed in the 1970s are more mobile in my opinion, that we can discuss it. But, um, you know, all I'm saying is, today, guys understand that they need to be athletic. I don't believe guys in the 70s were as athletic as they are now. Certainly size-wise, it was rare in the 1970s to see a big guy weighing 250, 260, right? Today, you actually have a lot of guys who weigh 240 and up, right? David Hay, by historical standards, is actually a fairly sized heavyweight, right? You, you have a whole list of people who were smaller than him. You have a whole list of contenders who were smaller than him. Today, David Hay, in many of his fights, is the smaller man. Okay, let's also talk about ambush fighting. <clears throat> I believe the break in the sport, and I do consider it a break, again, this is one man's opinion, um, you're not going to find it written anywhere, I believe a break in the sport took place when, to me, the father of ambush fighting, Roy Jones, right, fought one of the very best chess players, you know, pure boxers I've ever come across, James Tony. They were both unbeaten at the time. That fight should be up online. <clears throat> Everyone needs to be familiar with that fight. I believe it changed boxing. An argument can be made that what 
Pascal, what David Hay are doing is actually taking Roy Jones' style and fitting it to their needs, right? Roy Jones went through a decade, the 1990s, where he was simply dominant. He might be the most dominant fighter I've ever seen in his prime as his career progressed, right? I wasn't alive during the Sugar Ray Robinson era, right? I've watched Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather's brilliant, no doubt about it. But Roy Jones, while not technically better than Mayweather, not by a long shot in my opinion, but uh, Roy Jones really went through a stretch where he was dominating fighters you knew were great fighters, right? Virgil Hill, Mike McCallum. I mean, guys would face Roy Jones and it wouldn't be a contest. Vinny Paz, <clears throat> decent fighter, went through a round against Roy Jones where, according to CompuBox, Paz landed no punches, right? Well, understand, Roy Jones, in the James Tony fight, approaches the fight differently than Tony, right? Tony wants Jones to come to him so they can actually exchange. And there's a memorable sequence in the fight where, keep in mind, Jones, who really wasn't a master chess player, <clears throat> just wants an opening on James Tony. So the two guys are looking at each other, then Jones, who raises chickens, fighting chickens, literally has his hands apart at one point and kind of like gestures. Then when Tony tries to figure out what's going on, Jones then leaps across the ring with a very long hook that proceeds to drop James Tony. Right? If you look at that fight, that fight's an exemplar on ambush fighting. Right? Roy Jones never actually engages James Tony in the fight. Right? Tony's dying for the two guys to stand arm's length away from each other so they could actually box. Right? Because understand, that was James Tony's game. If you ever want to see a masterpiece, look at James Tony's deconstruction of Evander Holyfield. That's a classic that took place years later. Right? Understand, though, Tony didn't have the foot speed to keep up with Jones. And the brilliance of Roy Jones was to figure out a fight style where he was able to use bombs from the outside, great left hook, right, power shots. Then he had speed, but he only used it in an ambush way. In other words, Jones never is close to guys like Mike McCallum, for example, to actually exchange with him, right? McCallum, Tony, these are chess players up close. What Jones would do would be to literally leap in on an ambush, right? These guys didn't know what to expect. Throw a quick combination, think prime American, and then get back out, right? Another interesting fight is Zab Judah, let's remember, Zab Judah beat Lucas Mathis, right? Zab Judah famously knocked down Floyd Mayweather. Zab Judah himself has several belts. It's Zab Judah against Amir Khan. <clears throat> and I'll just say this, the fight's a mismatch because while Zab Judah is good up close, just like James Tony, right? Judah didn't know how to handle Amir Khan's ambush style. Khan's outside, he comes in, very quick hands, throws a combination. By the time Judah makes adjustments, Amir Khan was gone. Right now, it's interesting because guys like Jean Pascal are quite open in talking about his admiration for Roy Jones. Pascal openly admits that he patterned his style after Roy Jones, right? I believe that Roy Jones literally changed the sport because I believe that, you know, once the style was popular, once Jones laid out the brilliance in the 1990s, I believe a lot of these young guys started incorporating the effective tactics that Jones used. 
But understand who Roy Jones was. <clears throat> Jones had foot speed. Jones had hand speed. Jones had a devastating left hook. Right? He's not known for it. I don't know why. It's one of the best left hooks I've ever seen. Right? Jones would leap in. Jones would leap in with body shots. I know in an earlier video I said most ambush fighters are headhunters, right? Jones actually would leap in with body shots. But what Jones wouldn't do was to actually box you in close. Quite frankly, Roy Jones wasn't that great. If you could catch up with Roy Jones, his game started to fall apart, right? As he got older, needless to say, things started falling apart, right? Glenn Johnson's in his face. Roy Jones couldn't do anything before the knockout, right? Understand, you know, Antonio Tarver cuts the distance on Roy Jones. Roy Jones's career changes when Tarver catches up to Jones and Jones has his back against the ropes, right? Understand how different it would have been if Antonio Tarver had caught up with James Tony with Tony's back against the ropes. Understand, the guys who box you, the chess players, the James Tonys, the Floyd Mayweathers, you get them with their back on the ropes, they think they have you because all they want is you up there trying to trade with them. Roy Jones didn't want to trade. He wanted to ambush, right? So I actually think if someone were to ask me, <laughs> when did the sport change? When did the styles change? I think it changed with Roy Jones Jr. So you have John Pascal fights where the late great Emmanuel Stewart is actually on the broadcasting team for a Pascal fight. And Stewart is openly criticizing Pascal. Stewart doesn't get what Pascal's doing because understand for Emmanuel Stewart, it's chess, right? He throws this, I throw that. He throws this, I throw that. I move to the side here when he does this. I position myself there when he does that. It's chess, right? Stewart couldn't understand. Pascal style, which is, I'm out here, right? I fake, I fake. This guy moves the wrong way. I come in with a couple of power shots or a combination, then I get back out, right? Stewart couldn't figure it out, but yet Pascal, of course, has been a champion. Pascal has been an elite fighter for a long time. Understand Pascal's first fight with Bernard Hopkins was ruled a draw, right? Others against Hopkins weren't as lucky. Understand, too, Pascal knocked Hopkins down twice in that first fight. Such is the suddenness of Pascal's power. Anyway, um, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. I know talking fight styles puts a lot of people to sleep. I'll concede that. But I actually do think it's an important point because the only reason we have ambush fighting is because guys now are athletic like Roy Jones was, right? You know, David Hay, if you look at him in the amateurs, he actually used to be a different fighter. David Hay realized that ambush fighting played to his strengths, that he didn't have to actually exchange with you. He could actually move around the ring and, of course, he's elusive as he moves around the ring. But unlike Ali, who was up on his toes, David Hay is flat-footed when he throws punches, right? He's not trying to stun you with a jab. He's literally trying to KTFO you. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.